Welcome to this neural network programming series. In this episode, we will code a run builder class that will allow us to generate multiple runs with varying parameter values. Hey, by the way, do you know that Deep Blizzard has a vlog? If you want to connect with us in a totally different light, then come check out the vlog and say hi. Link in the description. All right, let's get to it. The purpose of this episode and the last couple of episodes of the series is to get ourselves into a position to be able to efficiently experiment with the training process that we've constructed. For this reason, we're going to expand on something we touched on in the episode on hyperparameter experimentation. We're going to make what we saw there a bit cleaner. We're going to build a class called Run Builder. But before we look at how to build this class, let's see what it'll allow us to do. We're importing order dictionary and named tuple from collections. And we're importing a function called product from iter tools. This product function is the one we saw last time that computes a Cartesian product given multiple list inputs. All right, this is the run builder class that will build sets of parameters that define our runs. We'll see how it works after we see how to use it. The main thing to note about using this class is that it has a static method called get runs. This method will get the runs for us that it builds based on the parameters we pass in. Speaking of parameters, let's define some parameters now. Here, we've defined a set of parameters and values inside a dictionary. We have a set of learning rates and a set of batch sizes with values that we want to try out. When we say try out, we mean that we want to do a training run for each of these learning rates and each of these batch sizes. So to get the runs from the run builder that are built using these parameters, we call the get runs function of the run builder class, passing in the parameters we'd like to use. Great, so we can see that the run builder class has built and returned a list of four runs. Each of these runs has a learning rate and a batch size that define the run. We can access an individual run by indexing into the list like so. Notice the string representation of the run output. This string representation was automatically generated for us by the run tuple class. And this string can be used to uniquely identify the run if we want to write out the run statistics to disks for say TensorBoard or any other visualization program. Additionally, because the run object is a tuple with named attributes, we can access the values using dot notation like so. Finally, since the list of runs is a Python iteratable, we can iterate over the runs cleanly like this. All we have to do to add additional values to test is to add them to the original parameter list. And if we want to add a whole new parameter, all we have to do is add it. The new parameter and its values will automatically become available to be consumed inside the run. The string output for the run also automatically updates as well. We can see this by creating two different parameter dictionaries, passing these into runbuilder.getruns, and we see that the output reflects the parameters that we passed in. This functionality will allow us to have greater control as we experiment with different values during the training process. So let's see how to build this run builder class. The first thing we need to have is a dictionary of parameters and values that we'd like to try out. Next, we get a list of keys from our dictionary. Then we get a list of values from our dictionary. And once we do, we can use these keys and values for what comes next. We'll start with the keys. This line creates a tuple subclass called run that has named fields. This run class is used to encapsulate the data for each of our runs. The field names of this class are set by the list of names passed to the constructor. First, we are passing a class name, then we are passing the field names. And in our case, we are passing the list of keys from our dictionary. Now that we have a class for our runs, we are ready to create some. First, we create a list called runs. Then we use the product function from iter tools 
to create the Cartesian product using the values for each parameter inside our dictionary. This gives us a set of order pairs that define our runs. Then we iterate over these order pairs, adding a run to the runs list for each one of them. For each value in the Cartesian product, we have an ordered tuple. So these are order pairs, but if we had say another parameter, we would have ordered triples and then ordered quadruples and so on. When we pass the tuple to the run constructor, we used a star operator to tell the constructor to accept the tuple values as arguments opposed to the tuple itself. And that's it. Finally, we wrap this code in our run builder class. Since the get runs method is static, we can call it using the class itself. This means we don't need an instance of the class to call the method. We call it by specifying the class and then specifying the method. And this will allow us to update our training code in the following way. Before, we had to unpack all of the parameters inside the for loop declaration. Now we can just say for run in run builder get runs and we can work with the run variable inside of our for loop. And now the comment can be generated automatically no matter how many parameters we have. All we have to do is turn the run into a string and the string function that's defined in the superclass will generate the output string that we can use to uniquely identify this particular run. All right, and now that we have this class, we can use it going forward. If you haven't already, be sure to check out deeplizard.com where there's blog posts for each episode. There's even quizzes that you can use to test your understanding of the content. If you don't know already, Deep Lizard also has a blog. The link is in the description so you can come over and say hello. And don't forget about the Deep Lizard Hive Mind where you can get exclusive perks and rewards. Thanks for contributing to Collective Intelligence. I'll see you in the next one. Do you know about the Cartesian product? Like many things in life, the Cartesian product is a mathematical concept. The Cartesian product is a binary operation. The operation takes two sets as arguments and returns a third set as an output. Let's do an example. Suppose that X is a set. Suppose that Y is a set. The Cartesian product between two sets is denoted as X cross Y. The operation is defined to be the set of all ordered pairs, little x, comma, little y, such that little x is in x and little y is in y. This can be expressed in the following way. This way of expressing the output of the Cartesian product is called set builder notation. It is cool. So, x cross y, is the set of all ordered pairs, little x comma little y, such that little x is in x and little y is in y. To compute x cross y, we do the following. For every little x in x and for every little y in y, we collect the corresponding pair little x comma little y. The resulting collection gives us the set of all ordered pairs little x comma little y, such that little x is in x and little y is in y. This can be expressed in Python code in the following way.